Welcome to KSA Data Vision YouTube channel. In this video, we'll try to focus on Azure and Fabric. Now, this video is especially for the people who already have been working with Power BI. What is the need of Azure and Fabric? How this is going to be very helpful in building your reports? We'll see that as part of this video. To start with, I'll be telling you what are the current challenges as a Power BI developer you are facing? When I'm talking about challenges, it's not about a technical challenge. It's all about the infrastructure challenge, like how to maintain your data cleaning, data transformation, and where are you storing your data? So that is what we are talking about our Power BI challenges. And in order to overcome that, we had a Azure as a solution. Yes, there are a lot of companies who are using Azure in order to have the limitations of Power BI. We are trying to come up with the best solution with the help of Azure. Now, yes, Azure is there. Now, what about Fabric now? Now, that is also something which we'll see how this Fabric is going to be helpful, which is going to be like a one stop shop. OK, now let's go step by step. The first thing which I wanted to talk to you is as and then when I'm recording this video until today, the best BI tool in the market is Power BI. For the last seven years, it has been able to maintain this ranking position from the Gartner being the one of the best BI tool in the market. Now, this Power BI is having another few components inside that. We have Power Query Editor, we have uh, Power View, we have Power Pivot. Each one is responsible for building the reports which you see towards the left side of your slide, right? Now, when all this can be implemented in Power BI, that means in future, what if the data keeps increasing? What if the data has been in millions, right? We have more number of data sets. We have more number of source files. At this point, can Power BI still hold all of this data? Now that's the biggest question mark, right? Now let's see what is the current architecture of Power BI projects. You may be getting the data from the different data sources, namely CSV files, flat files, Excel files, JSON files. Now these are the files that we are receiving as part of our source. Now currently what is happening all the Power BI developers who are doing reports you should be uh, like knowing this the data has been captured in the Power Query Editor and Power Query Editor we do all of the append merge join and then we do the data transformation and uh, there also we do have text transformation number transformation we do have a M language we uh, try to write the expressions all this complete setup the data cleaning steps we were able to do it in Power Query Editor now PQE stands for Power Query editor we do it in power query editor and from the power query editor we come up with a data set and that is a data set we use it for our charts visuals custom charts tags etc 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 that is what we are doing currently right now if i talk about only power bi it's a standalone tool which has some limitation, right? So if you talk about a pro, it has just one GB of your space. And if you take a premium, again, maybe a bit of increased version, but all in all, you have some limitation in doing the data modeling. And within the Power BI, we have something called Veripack engine uh, or Veripack engine. People call it in two ways. So that engine will compress the data and will help us to do the report. Now, this is what was happening until the Power BI reports were successfully running for smaller data. Now, in the recent times with the evolution of data driven technologies, the data we received with the reports is more and more. And we were not able to overcome. We we're not able to fit all the data within the Power BI. Now, that is where we thought of moving for other tools. Now, though it's a best BI tool, Power BI tool is one of the best. That doesn't mean that we can always overload it, right? You cannot put every load on Power BI. Yes, it can still do it. We still have a lot of alternatives that we can still manage the big data within your Power BI, but that's not effective, right? We'll try to utilize its strength. Power BI known for doing a reporting. Let's use it for reporting alone. Now, what we are going to do as part of the existing system challenge, we have a certain limitation and few limitations are as and then your data size increasing you have to store it in a server you have to pay for that so maintenance cost is going to increase and if you're building a new project you have to focus on the database that is also something which you have to invest and uh, of course when you're like uh, pushing everything into another system data loss can happen and companies also may have some limitation now all these are few of the challenges and the biggest challenges the performance of the report is a big hit like 
the performance of the report is affected and most of the clients started complaining about the slowness of the power bi report now how to overcome this now the entire architecture what you have seen here we were able to replace it with a beautiful cloud service which is called azure now we started using the features of azure as in then just to give you an insight azure is also a microsoft product which is a cloud based service for us it provides n number of services and if we focus on azure here just before the source and the power bi we are introducing another layer which is azure now what does this azure do now the most of the transformations that we were doing it in power query editor now we are focusing and doing it in azure data factory the reason is we have to reduce the burden of power query editor and then we are putting that load on the another tool which is azure data factory now in order to do the transformations in azure data factory there are two ways if you see the a middle layer the architectural diagram though all the data you can bring it to a adls adls stands for azure data lake storage from the data lake storage you can do it in azure data factory adf is for azure data factory you do all the transformations data cleaning everything and then again push it back into any of the cloud based server and from there you can directly point it to your power bi data sets and start doing the reports now in this case what i'm trying to do is i'm actually trying to reduce the burden of power query editor whatever the power query editor was doing we were able to do it with the help of azure data factory now this power bi architecture is been uh, used in most of the project nowadays to reduce the burden of a power bi yes power bi known for reporting let's use it for reporting only for the other things like transformations data cleaning gathering joining everything let's start using the azure now again there is a problem here what is the problem so again what is the problem so the problem is we have started using two of the components one is azure and one is power bi now we have to pay for both we have to pay for both we have to pay for azure subscription as well and we have to pay for power bi license as well now this is where the cost is slightly increasing though it can solve your a big data problem you can connect to any of the data but there is a slight problem here the problem is pricing so again i have to depend on azure azure services is there azure subscription is there i have to pay for it and then again there is an see power bi is a tool maybe azure is a service so we have to start using both the services now it becomes a quite challenging achievable and most of the clients are using it but few things which i need to keep in mind is how to maintain the two standalone components when this was a challenge microsoft never be quiet and they started to come up with a, a new update which is called fabric less than year old may 2023 that is less than one year they have come up with a new update called fabric now what is this fabric can do right so it is actually called like a one stop shop where you can do everything here rather than depending on the another cloud service which was azure now the updated architecture diagram that most of the companies are trying to use here is this one so now there is no need of bringing into a cloud and then trying to connect to your power bi reports we have a new update which is called power bi fabric now everything i can say that it can do everything in terms of data engineering data science real time analytics you can also build a data warehousing you can use it as a storage you can do you can process it you can transform it here also you have data factory there we have used azure data factory here we are using data factory within the fabric now lot of things have been added as part of the fabric now by this i am eliminating the data movement from our cloud which was azure i need not want to maintain two of the components one being the azure and one being the power bi rather than doing it at, rather than maintaining it multiple tools now i have come up with one single tool that is the entirely about fabric now fabric becomes like a one stop shop and that is becoming like a unified standalone data platform and it's again a microsoft update in the recent times when ai has been in the very much verge of all the technologies they have coming up with ai powered copilot where most of the things can be automated 
they're making use of artificial intelligence and coming up with update. Yes, we have done a lot of research in this last six to eight months of this fabric, and now we can say that we can completely use it for our real time projects. You can handle any data set for the complex transformation. All this we will be able to handle at the a single tool, which is Power BI Fabric. And as in then, it becomes a cost effective now because I'm maintaining everything as a fabric. There is no specific Power BI licensing or there is no Azure subscription now. All in all, I can have it as a, a single tool which can handle all of your challenges. With that, thank you so much for subscribing our channel. We'll come up with more YouTube videos. Please subscribe channel if you have not subscribed. Thank you.